In the last video in this series on driven modal versus driven terminal solutions, we analyzed a waveguide, and I made mention of the fact that this object is symmetric. One of the features we'll be discussing in this video is leveraging symmetry boundaries and taking advantage of the symmetry of objects to cut down on simulation time. Now this boundary is only available in driven modal solutions, so this might be one of the deciding factors in which of those solution types to go for. Let's take a look at a project that I've applied a symmetry boundary to. You'll notice that this waveguide has been cut in half in the XY plane. And if I look at that particular boundary condition assignment, we'll see that I have a few settings here. One is the symmetry plane itself, the boundary condition I wish to apply in the face that I cut. And we have the options of perfect E and perfect H. The other is this edit port impedance multiplier field, and we'll be discussing that in a little bit. So to understand which of these options I should use, we have to actually take a look at the field lines that we expect for this solution. And we could actually go back to our old project and look at the port field display to get an understanding of this. So you'll see here that the E field lines are pointing from the bottom to the top of the waveguide. Say I wanted to leverage the symmetry by cutting the XY plane as I did in that project. Well, my cut plane would be drawn horizontally, as you can see from my mouse. And you'll notice that at that extent at which I'd cut, all of the E field lines are normal to that plane. This happens to be exactly what a perfect E boundary does in HFSS. It forces all of the E field vectors to be normal at that particular boundary. Now I could just as easily leverage the symmetry in the XZ plane of this project by cutting vertically instead. And you'll notice that if I draw a cut plane in that dimension, all of the E field vectors will actually be perfectly tangent to that boundary. And that happens to be what a perfect H boundary does in HFSS. So that gives us a clue for how exactly we should assign that particular setting. Now, if we go back to our symmetry project, I'll once again take note that I've selected a perfect E boundary because the E field lines at this particular extent will be perfectly normal to that particular boundary condition. Now let's take a look at the port impedance multiplier field. You'll see I have it set to two, and the question is why? Let's take a look at a few basic equations. So say in our full geometry, we integrate across the electric field in a vertical path, and we get a voltage of, say, V0 at a given cut. HFSS might compute the characteristic impedance at this port using that voltage squared divided by the power launched at this excitation. Now say we look at a few of the geometries in which we've applied symmetry boundaries. In the example of the perfect E boundary, we see that the voltage arrived at when integrating along that same path is actually now half of the original voltage that we had in our full symmetry, whereas for the perfect H boundary, we see the full voltage differential for a given path. Now, if we were to compute the characteristic impedance at this port using the same method relative to the full geometry, we'd see that when we apply a perfect D boundary, what's computed is actually half of the characteristic impedance of our original full geometry. Whereas if we apply a perfect H boundary, we actually get twice the impedance. So this gives us a hint as to what these multipliers should be to account for this change in impedance. When we define a symmetry plane using a perfect D boundary, in this case, the multiplier ends up being two, and that's when we cut the geometry in half. When we apply a perfect H boundary, the multiplier is one half which gives us a sort of rule of thumb to follow when we apply symmetry boundaries. But this is not a strict rule of thumb, as these voltage comp computations might actually differ. So this becomes problem dependent. If we return to our geometry in which we've leveraged a symmetry boundary, we could plot the fields and see that they should be virtually identical to our full geometry. We could also plot the insertion loss of the first mode and see that they'd line up pretty well. And to demonstrate this issue, we could look at a perhaps more complex scenario.
Here I've drawn a small length of coax. And you'll notice if you look very carefully at the solution type that I solved this using a driven terminal solution. If I look at the insertion loss of this solved stub of coax, we can see it looks pretty good, very close to a 50 ohm launch. Now say I wanted to leverage symmetry for this particular geometry, and you'll see this is a little different in that it's not only symmetric on one plane, or even two planes. We could leverage symmetry because it's symmetric 360 degrees around. So what we can do actually is rather than take a half cut, in this case I'm taking a 1 8 wedge of that coax, and this should drastically cut down simulation times. Now if we look at the symmetry boundary, you'll see that it's actually applied to two faces. And if we refer to our old lesson on exactly whether we should use perfect E or perfect H, we could again look at the field line plots for any of our given ports and see that the electric field lines are perfectly tangent at each of those boundaries. And that's what we expect for our TEM coax mode. So if I open up my symmetry boundary definition, you'll see that, of course, I have a perfect H boundary applied for this geometry. And for my port impedance multiplier, I'm actually using 1 8 because I'm using a 1 8 wedge, which should have 1 8 the power. So if we look at the insertion loss, we can compare the two. What you see here is the 1 8 model compared with the full model. And it's very hard to tell the difference because they line up exactly the same. This concludes some of the uses of applying symmetry boundaries in driven modal solutions and what might drive you to instead perform a driven modal solution as opposed to a driven terminal solution.